Hey, buddies, Potemic Whiskey here, and welcome to Let's Play Civilization VI as Norway. And I think we have come to a decision. We are going to be going for a domination victory. So, that means we are going to need to capture Bogota, which is going to be a relatively easy city to capture. We also need to capture Ottawa, which again, will be a fairly easy city to capture because I'm in position with a fleet. We'll also need to capture Jan, which is probably going to be one of the harder cities to capture. And the hardest of all will probably be Buddha. The rest of them should be fairly easy to do. I might just go ahead and knock out Egypt and Dido here really, really quick because I'm already in the process of getting rid of those and then sort of split my fleets up and send them over to deal with the other people. The Maori should be really easy to deal with. So let's go ahead and get moving. These newly captured cities aren't going to be super useful, but I am going to go ahead and just invest in granaries and monuments in them uh, whenever I capture them and then just slowly get to work on something like maybe purchase a builder in them uh, to get these cities up and running and being useful. Uh, probably the best thing I can do is to build a harbor or something like that and get them to generate me a bit of gold. I will, of course, keep letting you guys see these delicious pillages for 121 sides and 400 gold. Before I capture Abydos, I will of course pillage this government plaza because it's going to go away when I actually capture the city. So I may as well pillage it for the culture. There's Kilwa Kisowani. And now what's important about Kilwa Kisowani is not only do we get a whole bunch of nice error score from things, but Kilwa Kisowani, what it does is if I come to Bergen here and I hover over this, you'll see down here at the bottom, it'll say plus 40% from modifiers. If you want your UI to look like this, by the way, and you're playing on PC, make sure you download Secretact's simple UI adjustments from the workshop on Steam. But you can see here, I'm getting a 40% gold modifier. Now that's because... First of all, I'm playing Merchant Republic, so I'm getting 10% from having having an established governor. I'm also getting 15% because I'm suzerain of a trade city-state. And I'm getting another 15% because I'm suzerain of another trade city-state. Antioch and Cahokia. That means in total, in Bergen, I'm getting a 40% increase in my gold. If I come over to Skedzmo, because I'm suzerain of two city-states, I'm getting a 15% boost to my gold in all of my cities, which is a huge amount of extra gold. So hopefully that explains why Kilba Kisanua is so good. And that also applies if I can also become suzerain of Nagazagarmu, which I think I will go ahead and steal suzerainty of. Because now that I'm suzerain of them, I grab myself a little bit of error score and I'm like super overflowing here. But more importantly, when I'm building units now, you'll see here I'll get a 15% production towards the units thanks to being suzerain of two militaristic city-states. That is the power of Kilwa Kisawani. I've also decided to go all the way for electricity so that I can pick up seaports which will allow me to build fleets and armadas because I'm not too far from picking up uh, mobilization which will allow me to build fleets and armadas. Coastal raid with my privateer for plus 50 gold. Get to work on killing Sidon. They should collapse pretty quickly. Uh, it should fall in the next turn or two. Pillage for another 400 gold. Pillage the aqueduct for another 405 gold. Pillage the government plaza for another 202 go culture. I'm also continuing to level these bad boys up by shooting this city. Coastally raid for 50 gold. As this builder runs around repairing, I'm just continuously getting 50 gold from sitting a uh, caravel or privateer right here. I think a plus four industrial zone would go quite well in some of these cities. It's time to maximize the amount of production I'm making so that I can produce large navies. Time to yoink a free settler from China. Thank you. I don't know where I'm going to plant this down. Probably maybe somewhere over here to act as a forward base, but I would need to clear out this island as well. So I think I need to bring a frigate down here to clean up this. Bring in both of my Nihangs to begin attacking Racket Death. Pretty much will two-shot that city, which is fantastic, especially since I also have a crossbowman in range to start getting a few levels from fighting it. Swoop into China and pillage that commercial hub. Thank you for the 400 gold. There's also a nice harbor in here that I can pillage again. I think it's about time that Sidon fell. Mm. Do I want to pillage that commercial hub first? I think I do, so I'll wait a turn on that one and I'll bring these guys to bear on the enemy capital. Fully pillaged Abydos, so now it's time to capture it. I think I will scooch myself just a tiny little bit more experience here before I kill it. Yoink, there it is. Abydos belongs to me. Now the loyalty in here is pretty bad, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem in the long run. Once I have deleted all of the enemy civs in the area, shouldn't be a problem. Settled the brand new city of Hamar. I'll buy a monument and granary in here just to get the city up and being useful. And we'll again just start a harbour trying to maximise the amount of yields that we get from this city. Ah yes, another campus pillage for 205 science. Beautiful. Pillage the bees as well for 123 faith or 130 culture and 205 faith. Sometimes I get them mixed up because my brain just like says the first word that comes to my head but I assure you 
At the very least, I will let you see them so that you can count them yourselves if I count them incorrectly. Time for Egypt's capital to fall. Thank you. And thank you. Bye bye, Rakadat. And we'll swing forward with our little man here. I need to work on Swinette. I think that would be good to get myself a triple frigate to start marching in down here and shoot the city from the coast. Before I can do any pillaging with my privateers, I do need to remember to level them up. So I am shooting the city of Kitty a little bit before I go pillage that farm. Time to blast down the doors of the Phoenician capital. It'll take a few turns of hammering away at this, but I do have some very powerful units in the nearby area to complete my mission. And we'll also grab Sidon for ourselves in the meantime. Now loyalty in here again, it's going to be a bit of a problem. It's going to be a bit of a problem for a while. But again, we should slowly start to see the results and fruits of our labor here. I'm going to bring these frigates over, shoot Inuk, and then begin attacking the capital. Coastally raiding more farms, 50 gold in the bank. Looks like we successfully stole some more gold in Hunza. Let's go ahead and take demolitions in case we need to sabotage production. Oh my god, look how juicy all this area is in here to pillage. Need to capture Cartagena de Dinius and kind of swing in here and see if I can get a bunch of pillaging going. Dido and Egypt are petitioning me for peace, but I think they're going to be my first victims because they're going to be the easiest to kill. Let's continue to work on the capital. We shall blast away the city's defenses. There we are. And then the ironclads should finish it. No problem. Beautiful. Let's advance our little military towards thingy. I managed to stack my units here. I don't know how I managed to do this, but I have managed to get two units on the same tile. I'm a little bit confused. Continue to steal gold from Hunza. 500 gold every six turns. Not a huge amount, but it is a nice little bit of extra gold on top. Yoink, 50 gold from another pillage. Privateers are pretty damn good, actually, in retrospect. Um, I should have known this, but I did not. Let's get our frigate into position to start hitting the city of Swanette as well. And we'll keep using the privateer because I'd like him to get a level up. Push our little knee hangs forward. I think I will hit the city with my knee hangs. I'd like to get a little bit of experience on them, even though this guy's actually ready to level. But he can do a significant amount of damage all by himself. Let's retake Kitty now that we have more loyalty pressure in the area. We should be able to keep the city for a little bit longer. And it shouldn't take us more than six turns to kill Inuk. In fact, I'm fairly confident I could kill this in two turns if I had enough frigates, but unfortunately I only have uh, the four and they're not fully upgraded. Once I have mobilization, I'll be able to combine all these together and they'll become a force to be reckoned with. Abydos did flip independent, but it's not going to be a problem. We'll retake it easily. Oh yes, China, please repair and improve your tiles. Please, please, please. I think the AI should really prioritize repairing their tiles over improving new ones. Um, I think that would make a little bit more sense. Well, I guess we can deal with this barb camp by pillaging it, thanks to Norway's abilities. And I think I'll settle my city right here. And this will act as a reinforcement location that I'll use to resupply my army and attack Hungary and as well for my aircraft. Oof, mega colossal eruption, although it is pretty far away from me, so it doesn't matter that much because it's in Buenos Aires, which I think I called Brussels before. Keep shooting Swanet, and I'll be able to double attack it with my knee hangs here. City should fall next turn. Inok will fall this turn, which makes me quite happy. Just in time. Kaboom. Okay, so Dido has been eradicated from the map, which means I don't need to worry about loyalty in any of her cities anymore. However, that is going to give me a bunch of grievances with all of the other players. You can see here, if I go up to the grievances log, final city captured 150, and that's applied to every other player in the game. So the final few players are going to be hard. It's going to be hard to hold on to the city, so it'll probably be Hungary and I'll just blitz their capital. And same for China. Whereas these other guys, it should be relatively easy to deal with them. Beautiful. There is the Venetian arsenal. That's going to make my, essentially my production towards navies doubled. And there's also mobilization. And we'll soon finish electricity to start getting our seaports out, which will increase our productivity towards these units in an insane way. Right, with mobilization, I want to head towards ideology and then pick a government. I'm kind of torn between going for fascism, which will give me plus five combat strength on all my units, as well as a war weariness reduction and a 50% production towards units, or go for communism and get the collectivization card, which would work really nicely with my city of Tromso. I think I will, however, yeah, I, I, think, I think I'll be going for totalitarianism. It's, it's just too good in the situation that I'm in. Like, I just built a single privateer and then got double. And now I should be able to combine these together all the way up to a armada. 
get myself even more error score, and now I have a 67 ranged combat strength unit ready to fight. Speaking of which, I have a bunch of units to combine together over here too. Let's go ahead and take a shot at the city. Combine you two together, as well as combine you two together. Capture Abydos. It belongs to me. Perfect. We'll keep that city. We will shoot Swinette to rip down the walls, and then we'll finish it off with one of these guys. That will kill Egypt. Perfect. So we've taken care of Egypt and uh, Dido really, really easily here. And I want to Faith purchase a couple of more knee hangs as well to combine them here. I also, I'm going to want some knee hangs from Tromso here. Are there any great people I'd like to really purchase? Not really, nothing standing out too hard. So I'm going to start mass producing knee hangs from Tromso because it only costs me 180 faith for a full army. Oh my god, wait, am I getting the, am I getting the discount from Nagazugarmu? Oh my god. There's, the, this unit is normally 200, it's 80 faith? What? I can purchase pikeman armies for 645 gold. Holy crap. That is powerful. But the knee hang purchasing a... This is an 80 something, 87 combat strength unit for 180 gold. And I think I can purchase just one of them per turn. But holy crap, that is absurd. Nice, we got Leve on mass, which will also reduce the price of our army significantly. We're making 300 gold per turn, which is really tasty. Plunder that trade route for 160 gold. There's some nice bees that I can pillage over here. How goes the repairs on the interior? Oh, harbor is ready to pillage. I'll grab that next turn. I think I'm just going to compress all these units into a single unit to try to save a bit of cash. Oh, nice. We managed to grab ourselves the Forbidden City. That is going to open up. I guess I will just declare war on this guy. Like, why not? Um, but yeah, that's going to open up some things. We also got seaports. Oh my God, there's so much to talk about this turn. Hold on. First of all, seaports are a big deal because it's going to allow us to mass produce armadas. So that'll take about eight turns. So we'll get to work on those. Tech-wise, we're going to go back to working on advanced flight. Um, we also have a new government slot. And I think I'm going to go ahead and plug in force modernization so that I can start to upgrade my caravels to ironclads really cheap and then start combining them all together because I have a ton of caravels and ironclads just lying around here ready to be sort of consolidated into a single mass of units. So we'll get to work on that right now. For example, I'll upgrade this caravel. Form armada. And this will just make my navy just a little bit smaller and easier to manage by com upgrading units, making them more individually powerful. And I don't have to micromanage quite as many units. 50 gold, 127 culture, and 213 faith. Man, privateers are actually even better for pillaging. At least when you're playing Norway. Yoink, 426 gold. And then we'll combine both of these together into armadas. Yoink, 426 gold, and I'll also grab myself 127 faith and 214 faith. I say 127 culture and 213 faith. God damn it. <laughs> oh, I constantly mess that up. Not out of any malice, mind you. Just occasionally I get a little bit flustered when I'm reading things. It looks like an emergency has been triggered against me, which means I'll have minus two combat strength against Canada and Coupe, which isn't a big deal because they're going to be relatively easy to deal with regardless. But at the very least, I will get 200 Diplo favor that'll instantaneously get sucked into the void of my transgressions and, like, <laughs> reputation on the world stage for carbon emissions, grievances, and occupying enemy cities. I mean, I feel like pillaging people's territory should get you grievances against them, because I've just done so much damage and generated so much gold from doing it. I'm building seaports in every single one of my main cities in the hopes that maybe armadas will actually be useful. Yoink, another 50 gold. I would have thought I would be doing more damage to a pikeman. I guess this pikeman is pretty damn strong. It should be absolutely no match for my uh, Nihang, however, because the sheer power of these units is ridiculous. Oh my god, I just nearly one-shot this city with a ironclad armada. Holy crap. I mean, Quito is literally falling this turn as well, and I only just began attacking them. Mm, I'm gonna need someone to look after the loyalty in here. I think maybe I could plug Moksha in there and that would buy me a good few turns. Yeah, that'll buy me like 13 turns to get in through here, around here, pillage all this stuff and then attack Canada. Then pillage all this stuff and take Pagoda. 
Jesus Christ. This is, this is actually kind of insane how, how much I've snowballed and just how much I've taken over this game. Like, I'm just generating, like, 50 gold per caravel per turn on every pillage as well. They've kind of taken over that duty. Nice. Siphoned some more funds with my spy. I'm going to take Con Artist so he's even better at siphoning funds, which means I don't need to establish presence in a city to actually get st a spy stealings off at a high percentage chance. Also, it's kind of hilarious how much I overshot this golden age. I think it's like, what's this, like 57 points over or 53 points over. Good God, that is, uh, talk about being an overachiever. Yoink, pillage that again, another 426 gold. May as well swoop in here and get ready to uh, heal and go and see if we can do some more pillaging on Hungary. Ah, 426 gold here as well for the pillage. A meteor shower, if I had tanks unlocked, this would be incredible. Since I don't, I think I would literally get knights or something here. Yeah, it's not really worth it. It's nice because it does give you a free unit, but I'm just not convinced it's worth me doing anything about. Right EO, time for my golden age. Uh, let's see. I feel like two arms is like my best move here, right? 15% production towards military units and a better Cassus belly. Although that doesn't really matter because I'm already at war with everyone. So what are you going to do? Oh, apparently because... Oh, wow, that's actually really interesting. So this meteor landed in my city and then my city automatically expanded and claimed it and then gave me a free knight. That's really interesting. I didn't know. So that's actually interesting. You can actually purchase the tiles. So they work kind of like tribal villages and um, barbarian encampments. If, you actually, if they actually like are taken over by your border, you also get the benefit of the meteor strike. Very cool. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this knight, however. Yoink! 130 culture and 219 faith. Yoink, 439 gold. Thank you. This guy's getting a little bit too hurt to continue. Is there a fishing boat nearby that I could steal or something? Doesn't look like it. I'll just kill that swordsman. All right, well, Cartagena needs to die. Ba-bam. City belongs to me. Loyalty in here is a bit of an issue. I'm going to go ahead and just appoint Amani again, just to have another loyalty stick governor that I can throw in cities with questionable loyalty to keep them on my side. But now the real fun begins because I can finally make my way through this passage and start pillaging all the delicious and juicy things on the other side that are pretty undefended. Yoink, another 50 gold. And yoink, 582 gold. I feel like just this, this entire series is, again, I'd have probably said this a couple of times, but it really does just feel like Potato McWhiskey steals everything that isn't nailed down. The true barbarian run. Plenty of stuff to kill in here, too. Look at that. 580 gold from a plundered trade route. Oh, my sweet Jesus. Oh, man. And I did that before I got Ching Shi, who would have given me 60% more rewards from plundering trade routes. Wait a minute. Why are suit sayers cheaper to purchase in this city? Hang on a second. 600 gold in here in a normal city for a suit sayer. Then I come over to Tromso. And the only thing that's different here is that I have Nagazagaru and a fully built in Katma district so I can buy soothsayers for 240 gold or faith rather that seems pretty insane also I've just been buying these every turn and this is the stream of them heading towards China and Coupe I really want to talk about something that really annoys me um it, it, it just happened over here all right my unit has six movement in the water and it was standing here on this harbor and I right clicked it for it to go to like this tile which it could have reached right that's one two three four five six so what it decided to do was to jump up onto land and then embark again using all of its movement. It's just like, ah, I hate how much micromanagement you have to do to make sure your units don't do dumb things like that. There's a lot of like little bugs and problems with the path, uh, the, the pathfinding system that just gets under my skin every now and again. Just stole another 50 gold here. Yoink, 50 gold to 130 culture and 219 faith. I am just kind of announcing every time I steal a bit of uh, resources, just so whoever is keeping track of the uh, of those things in my comment section doesn't miss any of them. Oof, mega colossal eruption. This thing hasn't erupted in a while, but it finally popped off and uh, it didn't do that much damage, but it still did a decent amount. The important thing to consider here when we are making units is that we basically get more than double production for our boats because we get 100% production and then that's doubled. We actually get quadruple naval production, which is pretty damn powerful. So I'm actually building these four times faster than any other save. However, I'm not sure that I actually need any more boats, but I don't really have any other kind of infrastructure I need to build in Necken. 
The only thing I would maybe consider is building a farm or two in here, but this city doesn't really need it. It has the production that's necessary for me to produce units out of, and so that's probably what I'm going to do. I'll just make some more frigates and stuff. I'm probably going to avoid building any more ironclads because I'm already starting to run to a limit of my coal production. Speaking of running into the limits of my coal production, I will buy a builder in Hamar to improve that coal right there so I can field a larger army, especially when I get the battleships and I'll need coal to... Uh, to sustain those they're in here somewhere there they are battleships oh me oh my there is so much to pillage here i don't even know where to begin i'll get this commercial hub done i want to do this harbor 439 gold and another harbor oh another four that's i just got a thousand gold in a single turn holy crap and i'm gonna pillage a trade route for 754 gold oh my god like this is just genuinely absurd it's insanity I don't even know what to say. So this is the kind of thing that I'm talking about, right? Um, I want this unit to go all the way over here, but it runs out this way and goes onto land and then it's going to hurt its movement. And I know that the unit's going to end up like right here on Nidoros because that's what happened to this unit last turn. But, but I also know that if I just carefully micromanage the unit, it'll go slightly further. Very nice. Captured a build out with my knee hang and we can get to work on taking down Fang and Nui. Pillage a mine for 50 gold, 130 signs and 439 gold. Mm -mm -mm. An enormous and hey, there is Aija Yaya Yokul. Aija Faya Yalokul. I have no idea how to say it. Wow, I've never seen it spawn right on the border. So actually a percentage of its yields are kind of wasted here. A thousand year flood in the city of Lahore. Oh my god, we just have ironclads coming out the wazoo. In fact, to the point where <laughs> we're starting to consume quite a bit of coal. Uh, quite a bit of coal. Uh, it might be a good idea to not consume so much coal. Perhaps even get a little bit more coal online. Get rid of that guy because he's being annoying. Speaking of new turns, time for some more pillaging. Uh, let's go ahead and pillage for 439 gold. And then pillage the trade route for 260 gold. Not quite as much as I used to get. Still pretty good. We shall then, of course, pillage for 439 gold. Here, I have 7,000 gold in the bank, by the way. <laughs> oh my god. We'll coastally raid this for 439 gold. May as well get rid of this crossbowman in the water just to make my life a little bit easier. Start bombarding Ottawa. It's a pretty strong city, so it's going to take a little bit of time to batter down the walls um, because it has Renaissance walls, but that's not a big deal. We'll get this thing promoted and we'll slowly chip away. Ooh, I could coastally raid this ca No, I meant to coastally raid the campus. I clicked the wrong button. Oops. I mean, I guess I have the money to just go, hey, uh, shipyard purchase and then seaport purchase. And then if I wanted a place where I could produce knee hangs to support this eastern front, I could also buy the Armory and the Military Academy entire, and then I'm able to purchase um, Nihangs in here for 180 Faith, which seems pretty damn nice, considering I'm mass-producing them over here uh, as well in Tromso. So this just gets them a little bit closer to my front line, and now I can mass-produce two of them per turn rather than just one. I think this city could use a builder. I don't know if I want to spend gold on it. I mean, builders are still pretty cheap compared to most of my other games. Maybe it'd be okay to spend 500 gold on the builder, but I think I might just get this city to build a builder. Pretty good city in terms of production, and oh my god, look at these ocean tiles. Oh my word. Needs a holy site in here actually as well. There's a nice plus two holy site on that farm, and that farm isn't very useful, so we'll, we'll plant that down there and slowly build that holy site. I don't really need a whole lot more army, um, not until I get flight, for example. Oh man, I could actually get the military academy right here. And then start mass producing Niangs here as well. Oh, that's so powerful. I'm just, I know I have Niangs here. I can run around here and pillage and kill these cities. Yum, yum, yum. Nobody ever built the Great Library, so let's just go for it. <laughs> it's probably not a great idea, but it's, uh, you know, we're building it. Uh, these ironclads are using up a lot of coal, so I'm just going to combine them all together uh, to try to ease my coal burden. God, look at the damage this Niang does to Hamilton. That's nearly half of the city's health in a single attack from a unit that cost me essentially 180 faith. This is absurdity. Pillage for another 50 gold. Thank you very much, Privateer. This promotion is really nice. I can't help but feel that like Privateers should get experience from pillaging. I, I don't know, like, 
that just feels right to me that that should be how things work. I know it's not how they work. Oh my god, look at all these builders over here. Why aren't they doing anything with these builders? They've been there for a while. Does the AI just not understand how to repair things? I, I, I really don't know. Let's go ahead and pillage that campus for 219 sites. Anything else I could grab? We'll kind of scoot your way back up over here. Oh, pillage a lumber mill for 439 gold. Don't mind if I do. You know, I really like the name of Cartagena de Indias. However, considering we killed Dido this game, I feel like we need a new name. Perfect. Now that's the kind of name I can get behind. Oh my god, I can purchase two knee hangs per turn. <gasps> this is just cheating. I'm cheating. I'm literally cheating. This has to be illegal. Another ironclad. Any more pillaging to do in here? Well, I guess I could pillage that uh, plantation there. 130 culture, 219 faith. Thank you very much. I need to get rid of this catapult. It's preventing me from pillaging that mine. And that mine, might I add, is worth science and gold. Yum, yum, yum. Probably a good idea to work on killing Hamilton too. Probably get that next turn. I don't think I care about pillaging some of this stuff. Eh, it's all just farms and crap. Not that big of a deal. Oh my god, did you repair your campus? Oh, thank you so much. 50 gold and 219 signs. There's another campus here. I'm gonna get flight so fast. This is shaving like two turns off of my, my, my tech research. This is insane. Slowly rip this city down. I have another knee hang approaching that I can get up onto the land as well this turn. Very, very nice. You should be able to bring down these two cities pretty quickly and then move on to uh, China with this army. I do have some boats surrounding China, but mostly these are here to pillage signs and stuff from their borders, like right here. Yoink, 439 gold. Thank you very much. Yeah, they're not really using their builders. They, I think they see my caravels and then think their builders are under threat when they're not really... Um, if you think about it, coastally raiding for gold from Jerusalem. I'm just farming gold from Jerusalem because they're running around with their builder re-improving their tiles. It's fantastic and it makes me very happy. Oh, thank you for building that amphitheater for me, giving me 600 culture over the next 300 or three turns. Oh my god. Beautiful. There is flight. We are going to want to produce aerodromes. Um, that's going to be a priority for me. In particular, in places like my capital, where uh, probably my aircraft manufacturing will be taking place. I do have nine turns until I get aluminum, so I'm just going to plop down an aerodrome in here. Um, but I'm starting to get my seaports online, which means uh, I'll be able to start building armadas here. In fact, I could build them in my capital right now if I wanted to. Uh, like, I could get an ironclad armada in five turns, which is... Uh, insane i could also purchase them if i was feeling frisky i could get an ironclad armada for oh my god 3420 um let me put this in perspective okay um to buy an ironclad that's 87 combat strength it cost me 3420 gold to buy a knee hang that is 87 combat strength it would cost me 180 faith and these units are even better oh my god where is this combat strength coming from hold on 112? Okay, it's just because they're embarked. All right, <laughs> okay, okay, they were embarked. Yeah, it's 87. All right, all right, we, we got to the bottom of the issue. We're fine, we're fine. Pillage the farm for gold. Oh, I forgot to promote this guy first. Oops, that's a bit of a mistake. But we are hammering down this city and it will fall probably in the next turn or two. No, Maori, you're not allowed to hit my trade routes. Thank you. Coastal raid for gold. More like a gold still raid. Am I right, guys? Starting to get a hang of my coal situation. Still consuming 16 per turn. Um, it's a bit of a problem. Yoink. Thank you for your culture. 219. Grabbed ourselves a new governor title. Who do I want to promote? Oh, Embrasure actually looks like an interesting idea. Because I could park him over in Carthago de Lenda Est. And in three turns... I would be able to recruit Nihangs that already have a promotion. That sounds pretty damn good. Have I have I unlocked railroads? Is that a thing? Oh, yes, I have. I'm going to get myself a couple of military engineers to uh, build railroads across this continent so I can conquer it a little bit quicker. I can upgrade these guys to submarines if I had oil, which I do not. So that'll probably be my next goal, is to get oil online. Oh my god, guys, can you just give me a break? There's all these barbarian caravels in the water. It's not like it's hard to deal with them, it's just annoying. Look at all these pillageable tiles! 133 culture, 222 faith. 
Uh, have we pillaged everything from Hamilton? I think we have. So we'll just kill the city. Yoink. The city belongs to me. We'll keep it for now. The loyalty is kind of bad. I guess I'll slot Amani in there. That'll keep the loyalty fresh and easy breezy. Bring down the coastal raiders. There's another 133 culture and 222 faith and another 222 science. Oh, oh, oh my God. It's just absurd how good this is. Right, do I bombard the city or do I take promotions? I feel like promotions would help me kill the city faster. Ooh, and plus one range. I like that one. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I think this is my frigate that's been around, or my quadri 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 quadrireme that, that I had at the start of the game, my quadrireme. Eh, just go ahead and build and repair everything. This city will probably never be useful, but it's fine. We get to keep it. It's our city. Yoink, pillage that for 50 gold and 222 science. A mega colossal eruption, the turn after I capture that city just obliterates my units. I need to like run away to heal now and then I'll have to park like an ironclad in that city to keep its loyalty safe. The range on my units is insane. Oh, look at the damage on that city. Kaboom. 28 defenses, kaboom. 23 defenses, kaboom. Oh, it's time to pillage. Pillage, pillage, that is 445 gold twice. Oh, I wonder what these give. Oh, they only give, they only count as farms. No, I was hoping that this was going to be so much money. At least I get to pillage that holy site. Railroad, time for some railroads. Let's get that knee hang. We can build a frigate armada in five turns. Holy crap. I don't think stealing gold in Hunza makes sense anymore. So what I will do is just take a promotion on this guy and then I might use him uh, just to make the war with Hungary a little bit easier. <clears throat> oh, you repaired your government plaza, you silly fool. Thanks to the 50 gold and 222 culture. Honestly, the AI is, is just, it's just a little bit, it's just a little bit silly. It doesn't realize how good I am and that it should just succumb to me and give up. Where do you think you're going with that settler, sir? No, 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 no. Thank you. No, no. That settler belongs to me. Thank you. Shoot the city. Fanganui should go down now. Or Fanganui. Excellent. Loyalty. Bit of a prop. Bit of a bit of a bit of a problem. Bit of a problem with loyalty in there. That's okay. Uh, we'll re we'll capture the capital. That'll buy us a bit of time. Um, could I maybe purchase a monument in here? Would that buy me even more time? Uh, the grievances with the founder is the problem right here. That's, uh, it's rough. It's rough. I got six turns. Six turns to hit the capital. But I do have more units coming in at the very least. And that'll make the uh, misadventures of attacking the capital a little bit easier. Yoink, another 222 culture from that theater square. And we will blast this Hungarian city as well. Do I take it now? Uh, sure. I'll just capture it now, but I mostly capped it just to, um, just to do damage to their economy. Yoink! 50 gold and 222 science from that campus right there. It's actually insane how much science this has gotten me for radio. Should I burn this forest down again? I think, you know what? I think this is, I think this is enough. I think this is good enough tiles. Six food, five production. Good enough. Oh, thank you for repairing this plantation for me, getting me 50 gold, 133 culture and 220 faith. So nice of the AI to just continuously repair their tiles that I can then go ahead and pillage. Montreal is starting to flip independent, as is Winnipeg, because my grievances against Canada are becoming a little bit too much for me to bear. So let's start pounding more of their cities and see if we can't wipe them off the face of the planet. That's the correct response to having too many grievances, is to generate more of them. Yoink, 222 faith in here. Although technically this isn't a coastal raid, I'm going to count it. Beautiful, we got the seaport in Oslo. I think I want to skip aerodrome in here. I don't think I need the factory. I would like the coal power plant, but it's only plus four production. So I might skip that for now. Instead, I'll start production on another frigate army. Begin the siege of Tehongi Inuakupe. I mean, first turn we took about 25% uh, of the city's health and fortifications. That's not bad considering it cost us almost nothing to do that. Pillage there. Thank you for the 445 gold. 
Oh, I've been waiting for this. I'm going to triple coastal raid of this commercial hub. That is 445 gold three times, which is like 1300 gold, man. Yoink. 133 science and 445 gold. Where are these barbarians coming from? I don't understand. Oh, there's a barb camp down here. I see. There's barbs appearing all over the world, pillaging my, my city states and myself. It's getting really old. Right, let's assault Coupe's capital once again. Kabam, kabam, kabam. Attack, 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 attack. Is that the kill? That's the kill. Yoink. Thank you very much for playing, Coupe. Next up is China. We'll begin the assault. Pop in here. Pillage that harbor. Pop back out. 445 gold. Thank you very much. Keep hitting Ottawa. We need to take this city down. City should fall next turn, which is perfect. Nothing left to pillage in here. And you may as well shoot the Vancouver city one more time, just to get that defense city strength down a little bit. I'll need a frigate sitting here shooting the city if this isn't a hill as well. Oh my god, you rebuilt your campuses. Thank you so much. There's Radio 222 Science. And not only that, but the most important thing is that we have discovered some sources. Oh, I never clear. I, I never, ever ever clear out my right hand side notifications we found one aluminum here that's going to require a builder and i need that online as soon as possible we have another aluminium over here that's actually perfect because i already have a builder in the area and another one in my capital which is already improved because it's underneath my mausoleum of Halicarnassus. My current goal is to just kind of harass Hungary into a bad position by forcing some of his border cities to like flip independent and stuff like that. And that'll just make the eventual war against Hungary a little bit easier because currently he's top sides and the longer I can hold him down into the dirt, the better. In terms of pillaging over here near Hunza, there is a nice tasty theater square as well as a mine right there. Yoink, thank you for the mine. And um, we'll get to work on that theater square next turn. Like, the AI is trying to kill my knee hangs. You can just see, like, the combat log filled with attacks on the knee hangs. And, like, yet here they stand. They're just dying to my units. They're, I feel, like, I feel invincible right now. It's pretty insane. And, you know, of course, I, I say that and then catastrophic eruption. Thanks, game. Just wiping out all my local tiles. It's a bit of an odd thing, like I just got my seaport, but now I realize that I don't really need um, any more fleets. Like I have total control of the seas and the thing that I need is like airplanes and stuff. The double pillage for 445 gold each. Forward settling China in the tundra just for that little bit of extra loyalty pressure from this city. So I'll spend a bit of gold getting it up and running. It's not going to be a very good city, but it'll be whatever. There goes the Canadian capital. Thank you. It belongs to me. And uh, I think I could opt to peace out Canada here. Or I could opt to kill them. Um, I think either of those options works for me. I'll think about it for now. Coastally raid. Coastally raid. Ah, oh, interesting. There's a bit of a bug with soothsayers. Because they are civilian-ish units... The coastal raid targets them but can't complete. So that's a bit of a bug that will need to be reported to the developers because I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't see the coastally raid. Like it used up the movement, it did the action, but didn't actually pillage the theater square or the soothsayer. It's a bit of an odd one right there. Let's coastally raid this as well. There's ideology and uh, 133 culture and 222 faith. Yoink, pillaging this holy site again. Ooh, I think I pillaged that trade route for 270 gold. Yes. Yes. Probably be a good idea to actually remember to purchase the knee hangs in here. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Let's keep getting them. Yoink, 229 cult, or faith rather. Yoink, 229 culture for real this time. Ooh, there's even a, a mine pillage over here to the east. Yoink, 236 culture and 459 gold. Oh my god. Oh my god. Coastal raid. Coastal raid, 229 science. Rakadeth is a city that's not super useful right now. However, it only has 10 production. But if I buy the lighthouse and the shipyard, then refresh its tiles, it'll jump up to 13 production. Not a huge amount. 
but still pretty damn good. If I come in here and plug in the Economic Union card and rip out the Skyscrapers card, plug back in Triangular Trade, or do I want Public Works? No. I think I'll do five year plan for the extra industrial zone adjacency. Plug that back in, refresh Rack of Death again, and now it's up to 16 production. That's a 60% increase in its production for about 1,500 gold investment. It's gonna make the city much more useful in the long run. <clears throat> Plus five harbor in Kitty. Too bad it's going to take forever to build without some productive tiles. I think I'll buy a builder in here to uh, get these sea tiles up and running because they're pretty good for me. First copy of aluminium is online, which is perfect because we can start getting more of them online and be ready to start producing aircraft because they only require one aluminum or aluminium to build. I am going to want to pick up resource management as soon as I have fascism so that I can produce more alum al aluminum and oil, which will allow me to uh, produce more aircraft and boats and stuff like that. This is the beauty of having a three ranged frigate. I can just kaboom the city of Vancouver all the way from over here. Speaking of climate change, uh, the world is starting to flood because I've been pumping out CO2 thanks to my navy. It's going to be a bit of a problem, but hopefully I can win before uh, the real apocalypse begins. Pillage two holy sites for 400 plus faith. And now I'll actually be able to coastally raid this uh, like I was being blocked before. I'm actually going to go ahead and delete some of my ironclads next turn because I have a few too many. So I'll let them heal up and then delete them because they're hurting my coal income a little bit too much and I want to have room for battleships. Time to begin the siege of Mohenjo-Daro. I'm also going to do a bit of coastal raiding here for gold, culture and faith, but we shall begin the attack like I was saying uh, next turn. Another holy side pillage for 229 faith. I have a pretty stupid amount of faith at this point. Another aluminium in my pocket. I can now have up to four aircraft without losing aluminium. Grand Columbia wants peace. They will never get peace from me. No, thank you. And neither will Hungary, despite how tasty those peace deals that they're offering. Oof, I'm going to generate 100% more grievances now. That's going to make my life a little bit harder in terms of loyalty, but it shouldn't be too big of a deal. Well, let's go ahead and grab these two cities. And we'll get to work on Hunza as well. I think I might be able to grab this this turn. There we go. Three cities in a single turn. Keep. Keep and uh, liberate or keep i think i'll keep keep loyalty in here going i'm of course continuing to pillage as well a little bit of era score for connecting my cities with railroads i'm not even sure why i'm really building these railroads other than it'll allow my units to kind of traverse the map a little bit quicker and uh yeah let's go ahead and can you pillage that no you can't but i'll get you a promotion regardless We'll bring these guys to bear upon the city next turn. Ooh, instantly build a lighthouse and shipyard in this district. 50% flanking bonus for all naval units. There is Nelson himself. Ha ha! Double frigate armadas produced in Tromso. I'm going to go ahead and build a another set of those. I think I've decided to not peace out Canada and I'm just going to eradicate them from the map. I think it just makes my life a little bit easier if I kill them. Just stole a builder from Brussels. And I do believe it's time to begin the siege of Mohenjo-Daro. Kaboom, kaboom, kaboom. I think this mine is actually more valuable to me if I pillage it. So I'm going to send a Nihang around there to grab it. And then we will also crash these units into Mohenjo-Daro after I pillage for a bit of health. Let's crash our knee hangs into the city as well. Slowly chipping away at it. Yoink, 495 gold, thank you. There is totalitarianism, giving us plus five combat strength on all of our units, as well as a war weariness reduction and a 50% bonus towards unit production. We're gonna have to reshuffle our whole government here. We want to have all of these things slotted in. We would also like to have third alternative, if at all possible, because it's a lot of culture and gold from research labs, military academies, and power plants. I would like propaganda as well to have less war weariness. Martial law would be really nice too, for even less war weariness and loyalty from garrisoned units. I might get rid of five-year plan. 
just plug in economic union and then temporarily slap in third alternative until I have the card that lets me produce more, um, what you call them, more air, uh, more uh, aluminium and alum, aluminum, whichever way you want to say it, because that'll allow me to increase the amount of aircraft that I have by 50%. Oh, I realized why I couldn't buy two knee hangs in Trump, so it's because I had a warrior sitting on the encampment. But these are going to start heading towards Hungary because we're about to start making mincemeat out of Hungary. All right, time for Vancouver to meet their maker. Kaboom, destroy the city, attack it again, then hit with both of these knee hangs. Will it survive? I don't think it will. That is Vancouver dead, and then it should be a pretty easy kill on Windsor as well. There we go. Canada has been wiped out off the face of the planet, so I don't have to deal with loyalty in their cities anymore. I can take Reina and reassign her back to the city she was meant to go to, which is Papayan. Which is where she truly belongs. Um, we can pull Amani out to do some loyalty in other cities. Use Horatio Nelson in Dramen. That'll give me a bit more fleet uh, adjacency flanking. However, more importantly, it'll also give me a lighthouse and shipyard in Dramen to make it into a useful city. Also, did I mention that I like produce units like stupidly quickly now? Like I can build ironclads that are 380 production in nine turns in a 14 production city right now. That is just how powerful my uh, military production capabilities are right now. A free settler? Yoink. <laughs> I've stolen another settler. Oh my god. What is this game? Alright, I'm just going to go ahead and do listening post in Hungary. Uh, because my goal is to just get a combat strength bonus against them. Because they're, they're going to be the guy that's the hardest to kill. Maybe China, but probably Hungary. Because just things are a little bit awkward in terms of attacking them. Oh, Brussels has been hard at work repairing... Thank you for the 472 gold. This is the power of railroads. I can redirect my knee hangs to where they need to go really easily. How is this knight blocking this tile? That makes no sense. My units just refuse to walk through each other. It's very weird. We've got a railroad going all the way over here now, so it should be much easier to rip these cities down. Also, pillage. Not worried about these cities getting retaken, so I'm going to swing my fleet around to start attacking the eastern side of the Grand Colombian Empire. Let's begin hitting the city. My units are so strong they can rip these cities down easily. Yoink, pillage for 165 gold. Again, this doesn't make any sense. Like, I'm not at war with this unit. I should be able to walk through it. It's it's neutral to me. Buenos Aires is neutral. Why can't I walk through his units? I can walk through it with boats and stuff. It's just this weird pathing inconsistency on water that really bothers me. All right, let's begin the siege of Mohenjo-Daro in earnest again. I think I might be able to nearly rip this city down this turn should be just about to fall there we are i'll get that pillage and then kill the city next turn and we'll begin working on Zhirong. i'm also working on chengdu so i should be able to grab three cities within quick succession and then maybe beijing will fall as well but ultimately i want to get the Jian, or rather jian jian i'm cutting a lot of footage because a lot of it is just army micromanagement you know like moving units around uh dealing with cities giving them things to build so not a whole lot of it is super interesting um engaging gameplay but it's fine it's not a big deal also i have so much gold that i could just like throw it at cities if i feel like it and i, I like here again like the, like if you're wondering what's in like the hidden footage it's a lot of this it's a lot of like moving military engineers to build railroads it's a lot of like choosing what to build in cities that don't matter it's a lot of just moving units um to the front line it's, it's just a lot of like micro y stuff that isn't super important for you to actually learn how to play the game. Because I'm not really making interesting decisions. I'm just like finding a unit and clicking it in the general direction that I want it to go. And then I focus on like micromanaging it when I'm actually closer to where I want to go. Oh my god, I could take the capital with a single knee hang. <laughs> oh my god. I just killed this city with one hit. Coastal raid, 141 culture, and 235 faith. Tempted to delete these ironclads here because they're only ironclad arm fleets and I am already starting to run into coal issues. So I'll need to cut down my coal consumption or increase my coal production. One of the two. Let's pop in here. Oh, I can't pillage until next turn. Well, I mean, it's not super important that I take this city this turn. So I might just step down and prepare for attack in Zhirong. Or Zhirong. I don't know how to say that city's name, but... I feel like I'm getting somewhere in the ballpark. Zhirong. I, I don't know. I know like a, a, a XI is like G. Zhirong. And this would be like Jian. I'm slowly learning how to pronounce these cities properly. Run, little settler. Run. 
I stole you, fair and square. <laughs> Hey, lovely. So I got the first technology research in the Atomic Era, which is advanced flight. We've also got an Appease the Gods going on. I'll probably be able to deal with that no problem. And uh, honestly, the game might even end before I get that. But now I can start the production of or purchasing of um, bombers. I will be probably saving my gold to mass produce bombers in cities that at least have hangars and airports. So I want to get both of those so that they can level up nice and quickly. And uh, sure, why don't I just yeet? my freshly made knee hangs into the volcano like what's the harm what's the harm sacrifice two of them then i automatically should win the appease the gods no matter what happens now with the advent of advanced flight what we want to head towards next is grabbing refining for oil as well as battleships because that's the next upgrade for our fleets after that i think it'll be destroyers and aircraft carriers are going to be like the goal and then potentially nukes if the games last long enough. Spent a few fill, spent a few builder charges in Kitty, and now I have a ton of really nice fishing tiles. Like this is the power of fishing tiles as Norway in the late game. Look at these. The city doesn't even have a harbor. If I were to swing over to a city like, for example, Tromso, these are even better fishing tiles. My goodness. Let us pillage for science and gold, and then we'll also... Oh, pillaging dams only gets you health, so I'm not going to bother pillaging the dam. I'll just kill this city. Yoink, there's Mohenjo-Daro. I could keep it, or I could liberate it. If I liberate it, I don't have to deal with the loyalty pressure or the grievances, because this gives with every major powers. Yeah, whatever, I'll liberate Mohenjo-Daro, whatever. It's fine. Bit of liberation... Won't go wrong for us, I hope. Begin on Ji Rong. Chengdu is about to fall. Should fall next turn. Major defeat. Hammering the city. That's good. The nice thing is, because I'm suzerain of these two city-states, uh, Mohenjo-Daro and Kaguana, I'm getting a 15% increase in my um, culture per turn across my entire empire. Which means I should get to some of these nicer cards a little bit quicker. Unfortunately, the world is beginning to flood. Um gonna be a bit of a problem it's gonna be a bit of a problem uh the yields of my empire are gonna start going down tiles are gonna start disappearing um the world is flooding so i'm on a bit of a timer here now to finish the game before the apocalypse begins and just like yeets me out of the out of existence well nothing for it but to throw my units into the enemy cities mercilessly hoping that they die almost got that city actually and bogota should fall this turn. Yoink. Thank you very much for Bogota. Still pillaging for gold, culture, and faith uh, whenever I get the opportunity. But I have much less opportunities because the AI is just never getting a chance to repair their tiles at this point. Let us take Chengdu. Yoink. It belongs to me now. Thank you. We'll begin uh, moving our army across to join the fight in Jirong. Uh, I'm going to grab a Mani, plug her into Chengdu to get me a bit of loyalty. Don't know if that's going to last, but I might be able to break Jirong before that becomes an issue. Yeah, I think I think I might be able to break this city next turn, and that'll give me even more loyalty, and then I'll be able to move in on Changsha. And uh, I kind of have a little bit of a beginning of working on Beijing. I've mostly been training up my frigates by fighting the city's encampment here. Uh, so that's been working out pretty well for me. Let's quote-unquote liberate Debrecen, and we'll keep it, but my plan isn't to try to hold it for too long. I'll reassign Victor over there. Uh, mostly I'm just trying to keep this city from going back to Hungary so I don't have to get more grievances for retaking it. And uh, doing the same thing here in Sezid. Pest. Pest needs to uh, get recaptured as well. Because if I can start like capturing their cities all together and they can start like exerting loyalty on each other, I'm going to be in really, really good shape to actually take over Hungary. Curious what would happen if I cause a disaster on this tile. Just damage. It it just does damage. It doesn't fertilize. Oh god. Well, let's you know, let's let's try again. Nope. Just just murder. It's just people dying. Let's 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 not do that anymore. Let's let's pretend we didn't do that in the first place. I'm going to go ahead and coastally raid this because I want the money to be able to purchase an airport in my capital. Which will give me a bit of air score, but more importantly, make my bombers stronger when I eventually get them. So now all my gold will be going towards getting bombers. Also, we have a great general now. I think I'm just going to instantly recreate create that cavalry unit and then delete it just to get rid of him so I'd have to micro him because I'm pretty sure he's like too old for, it to, for him to be useful. 
in terms of like which era of units he affects. And most of my land units are religious units anyway, so it's not like he would do a whole lot. I think I will peace out Simon Bolivar though, because I don't need to be at war with him. I'll just take all of his money. Yeah, 102, 102 gold per turn for 30 turns is fine. I'll just take that money and not even worry about him like existing anymore because I've basically crippled him. I'm also going to delete these military engineers. Can't build railroads in the ocean. And it doesn't seem like it's super necessary for me to continue to have them. I kind of had my fun with them. I, uh, I, don't, I, I never needed them. It was just kind of fun to use them is really why I had them. So we'll just get rid of those. Finally, we'll take Sagid as well. There we go, it's finished. I've got two more frigate armies coming down here to be able to take Tatabanya really, really quickly. Hoping that I can grab this really fast and uh, provide loyalty pressure on these other cities. Because I'm hoping every city that I take here is like a step closer to my goal of uh, capturing Buda. Which is like the true end game raid boss for me here. Mainly just because it's not a coastal city. Like it's just off coast. So I have to actually like do weird stuff to try to capture it. And I have so much faith at this point that I'm just going to produce Ni Hangs. Even if they're the weaker version of them. And I could even just start buying some of these like great people if I really wanted to. I don't see a reason to though. I'd like I'd rather use my faith for, for things like um, like Ni Hang. Let's take uh, Ji Rong. Like so. Bada bing, bada boom, city dies. We'll come in here, we'll coastally raid that holy site for a bit of gold and faith. And then we'll start attacking Changsha. Changsha is going to be a tough nut to crack, but um, it'll get us close to Dijan. I just, I just don't have it, like, because again, this isn't a coastal city, so I just have to wait for my um, Nihangs to get here before I can siege that properly. More than anything, I have to wait for my three range frigate to get over here to actually be able to hit the city. Um, with uh, sort of the assistance of other frigates that will actually start making their way around now. I could just go for their capital, I think, here. If I take Changsha and Jian, I think I win the game. And I think at this point, um, it's not super important for my governors to do anything but provide loyalty to make my life easier. So I'm going to start reassigning like all my old governors that should should really be sitting still to forward placed cities to buy me more loyalty time in them. Ooh, Mega Colossal Eruption, owies. You know what might be a good card to plug in? Now that I have Conservation, all right, let's say I pulled out Third Alternative and I plugged in Resource Management. Let's say I got rid of Force Modernization. Put that up to the top. What if I instead plugged in Colonial Taxes? That would get me 25% gold and 10% production in cities not on my original capital continent. I don't think Total War really matters anymore for me. Um, I've basically pillaged all the pillaging that I will pillage this game. It's really about finishing the game out. And my coal reserves are a little bit low and I would like more niter. So I'm going to plug in drill manuals and I think this is the government we're going to go with. Yep, that 25% boost in gold income brought me up to 800 gold per turn. Let me just quickly get rid of this encampment so that my invading Nihangs have an easier time uh, taking Beijing and Jian. Here comes the march of the Nihangs. All right, let's pop you out to heal and we'll attack Zhao Dong. The Battle of Changsha has begun, but I do have Ni Hang support, which is really, really good. Now that we have totalitarianism and conservation, I think our next goal is to go towards... Hmm, where is the aircraft production one? Yeah, Strategic Air Force. I think that's the one that we want to go for. Being able to produce air units faster would be really, really nice. Oh my god, the March of the Ni Hangs, dude. I have so many of these units, and they're all just flooding towards the enemy. This is ridiculous. I don't even I don't even think I need more. Oh, I should probably direct some of these towards Hungary, shouldn't I? That might be a good move. I really need to capture one of these cities that actually has an encampment. The double frigate ripping the defenses of this city apart. Yoink and yoink. Not quite as much gold as I used to get, but still a solid 640. First of all, let's begin the Battle of Changsha. We'll pop up these guys. We'll begin to siege the city with our ranged units first because that allows us to lower the combat strength of the city. Um, we'll begin to cycle our units around to get it under siege, and then we'll begin throwing them at it to bring its health down rapidly. It's spending a lot of unit health to do this, but the faster we kill the city, the better. The next phase is to begin the siege of Beijing by combining units together and cycling in and out with our frigates. We'll begin the Battle of Jeanne here soon once I have my level 3 frigate over here. Or sorry, my, my three range frigate rather. Have you ever seen a player with 5,000 military strength against players who all have less than 300? I don't think I've ever seen that in one of my games ever. It's kind of absurd uh, what's been going on this entire game. But we are making progress. 
The battle for Miskolk is now underway in Hungary as well, and I have Ni Hang starting to arrive. Only one for now, but I am continuously producing even more of them out of these cities that I'm kind of capturing and recapturing over and over. I mean, why shouldn't I? I have the faith to do it. Like, may as well just like continuously produce out of these cities and have an absurd number of units. Go, Maori, what are you doing here? Get out of here. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Leave me alone. China wants to give me peace. Uh, that's a no. I'm really, really close to a domination victory, actually. If we come in here and check it, I've got five of the capitals captured. There's just two more to go, I believe. Yes, I think I just need China and Hungary's and uh, we're working on the sort of first part of China's capital, which is to take Changsha, which should open up their capital to being attacked. I'm just kind of throwing units at this city in the hopes that it falls. There it is. Perfect. We'll be keeping this city. That's going to give us enough loyalty to stand against these other cities as well. We're hammering the hell out of Beijing and hopefully it falls in the next turn or two. Just kind of continuously chain stomping my units into it. Um, so the next thing is to begin the siege of Jian as well. Which will require a bit of finagling. Getting our units into position. But we started to rip down the fortifications. And it should be a pretty easy finish off with our uh, Nihangs. Ooh, we got our very first bomber time to rebase you. Um, now I would like to rebase it all the way down here but that's going to take an extra turn and the reason I settled this uh, Stickelstad city is just so I have a place for my bomber so I'll rebase it to Stavanger and be able to bomb it down here next turn. I'm also going to go ahead and purchase myself another bomber and then begin the production of another one. And the really cool thing is because I built up a full airport you see these bombers they will uh, get 75% more experience which is really damn nice. Uh, so this is the phase of the game where you really want to stop caring what your cities are building and just make sure they're not taking up too much time. So what I do is I just I just click the very first decision that makes sense to me and then stop thinking um, when I'm micromanaging things that don't matter. Like the only things that matter to me are the sieges of China's cities and the sieges of Budapest. Everything else is just getting units in range to help. So I just kind of like move them in the general direction that I want them to go. And I don't worry. Again, I really just don't worry about exactly where you need them to go. Because the goal is to get to the end efficiently. But also with your sanity. If you him and haw about every single little decision in the entire game, you drive yourself insane. And don't be afraid to sleep units that aren't super useful anymore. Like these, um, these ironclads, they're too far away from where I need them to be. And the game will probably be over. Um, I guess probably the best thing would be to bring them down here to work on Xiaodong. But yeah, they're not super important, so I can just kind of ignore them. I'll use my privateers to try to clear out some of Hungary's units. Because it will threaten my Nihang. And that's the only real Nihang I have in the area that will be able to help. <laughs> I actually built the Great Library. That is hilarious. Wow. Uh, turn 188 Great Library Guide, by the way, guys. Right. Beijing is under siege. Like we said, it should fall next turn. Jian is about to be surrounded. I have all of my units coming in. Apparently I managed to get Isaac Newton, which is a bit weird, but okay. I mean, I'll take him, I guess. Uh, sure. There we go. Better universities. Nice. Also, I've started just doing um, some projects in a lot of my cities. The reason for that is, is that it's not super important what I build. The most important thing for me right now is just getting units to where they need to be. Tatabanya will fall next turn, which is great. It means we're establishing our foothold on here. I'll be able to actually attack with my bomber on Buda next turn, which will rip the city to shreds. Um, I think it does about a third of its fortification in damage once per turn. That's the power of aircraft. You get them uh, early enough. I mean, turn even turn 200, it's a bit late for aircraft, um, depending on the game that you're playing. But I think we're going to be just fine pest flipped independent again that's fine we're just recapturing it this city just exists to um just exists to exert loyalty and, and hurt hungry like i don't mind spending a couple of units on that now the question is do i want to take miskolk um and get buddha a little bit faster next turn with a pair of aircraft and supporting ships from like here or something and i think that's what we're going to do i have another bomber to displace down to Song Sogondal and I can buy another one if I could get a pillager or two off. Let's have a look around. 
See if there's anywhere I could pillage for gold. Doesn't look like it. No, I don't think I see any gold pillaging. Well, we may as well finish off Beijing. So now I own Beijing. That's mine. Uh, and we'll start promoting some of these units to heal them up for the attack on Jian. We could pop here. We'll grab another promotion. We'll keep attacking the city with my long-ranged frigates. Step you up there. I'll bring another. The city is completely surrounded. And that's it. It should die, actually, this turn. I, was, I wasn't expecting to kill China this turn. But I'm happy that I did. Next, I just need to uh, rip through Zhao Dong. I mean, that should be a fairly easy win, actually. So that's it. I think, considering how few of my units it's actually important to move right now it is, I'm just going to shift enter to end my turn, because I'm like two or three turns away from winning. Uh, sure thing, I'll give you peace, China. I mean, may as well, at this point. Like, I've taken everything from you, I may as well leave you existing. Sega Z went independent, not a big deal. We'll capture Tatabanya. And try to recapture Sega Zid. There we go. I don't know how to pronounce that city's name. And frankly, I don't really care too much. As long as I don't get it like horrendously wrong. Uh, Mist Kulk, I think, will be good. To do you in this turn. That'll completely obliterate this city. And this will act as another airbase for airplanes. We'll assign Magnus to Mist Kulk to... Uh, keep loyalty in there nice and happy because I can't actually reach um, Buddha with this aircraft I needed this city to be able to double attack Buddha with that aircraft so that worked out pretty well also I should be able to pillage now and purchase myself another aircraft let's go ahead and buy ourselves a bomber in here the winged Nihangs have arrived to join the fight which is exciting uh, I don't think I'm going to bother really actually taking Estergom, but I do have my Nihangs to swarm in and cover Buddha. And of course, I'm going to shift enter my turns again, because um, at this point, only a small portion of my army matters. Category 5 Hurricane in Montreal. Well, thank goodness that doesn't matter to me anymore. More of my cities are flipping independent, but that, that's totally fine. Like, I can, I can deal with that. The really cool thing here is that I can upgrade to battleships, which have three range, which means I can actually position my guys over here to assist in the attack on Buddha. Let's get both of our bombers to hit Buddha. One and two. Significant amounts of damage. Not quite enough to finish the city off, but we're getting close. We are getting very, very close. I decided to just shift end my turn. I'm so close to winning that I don't think that any of my decisions really matter at this point. The only thing that matters is taking Buddha. Now, right before we win, we just got Cold War. I'm interested to, to, to kind of have a look at some of the stats in the game. We only made it to phase two of climate change. I have 6,000 uh, 6, military strength and it could have gone higher. I have 1,000 gold in the bank at 300 faith per turn, 300 culture per turn, 300 science per turn. I have an ungodly amount of cities across the map. And uh, I also have aircraft in uh, 1310 AD. <laughs> so uh, let's go ahead and kill Buddha. There it is. And I'll take it with a Nihang. Just to kind of have the little dressing on top of this campaign. Unit captures. We win the game. You get the domination victory screen. And that's it. Lovely, happy times. Take a moment here to just look through the graphs as well. Like, oh, look, cities captured. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, I captured like one or two cities. Bruh. <laughs> cities lost. I lost zero cities. I'm curious how many units I killed. Like, just look at this graph of units killed. It's just a nonstop murder spree. But units lost, I actually lost comparatively few. In fact, I stopped losing units around turn 120 into the game. War is declared. Bruh. <laughs> wonders constructed. I actually constructed the most wonders in that game too, which is kind of surprising considering the AI usually does way better. Oh my god, player science. Look at this. This is just insanity. Um, but don't forget, like, a lot of my culture and stuff was coming from pillaging. Oh, you know what's going to be fun? Looking at the faith. And... If you look carefully, uh, no, where is it? Player gold, is it? You should be able to see where I'm pillaging, like the spikes as I pillage and then spend, pillage, spend, pillage. You know what I mean? 
Oh, do you know what we need? We need, um, this is a request to Firaxis. We need graphs for how much stuff was pillaged. Uh, like how much faith was pillaged, how much culture was pillaged, how many pillages in general were done. All that sort of stuff needs to be recorded. So go ahead and like at the Twitch, de- or at, not Twitch. Go ahead and at the developers on Twitter is what I was trying to say. Anyway, I'm going to call that the end of the series. But what I will do is I'll pop into screenshot mode and let you guys just look at the original starting place of our empire. I love you all very much. Give me your ideas for the next series in the comments and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.